What can we learn, if, if, if any, if we can learn anything, from the history of past crises to understand the present financial and economic crisis? Is history of any help? Uh, I think, uh, in the first place, it's important to say that people think history is of help, and that is already something important, because obviously if you think it's going to be of help, you, at least you're going to pay attention to it, whether it's a good idea or not is another matter. Uh, I, I, uh, there's been an extraordinary proliferation of books in the last couple of years written on crises, uh, various uh, historical moments, and um, a lot of authors have made money and uh, attracted attention uh, in this matter. So I think that's quite an interesting fact, because I think in earlier crises, although they also provoked a certain amount of literature, for example, the Latin American debt crisis, people worked on that, uh, it's, it's not had the same impact as this one has had on the um, effort to understand uh, this, this, our present situation historically and on the interest that the, uh, the public opinion in general has had about the importance of history for understanding these things. Now, whether it really is uh, so important or not is, is difficult to say because, of course, until we have reached the end of this, if we ever reach it, it's going to be difficult to know whether it will have been of help or not. Uh, I think while public opinion seems to be quite uh, focused on the past uh, or, or, or seems to have some belief in the beneficial uh, effects of knowing a little bit about the past in order to see the way in the future. I'm not sure that our politicians seem to be so inspired by this. Uh, and uh, this may be because they have a better insight than we historians have, or because they are so absorbed by the, the terrible struggle to make sense out of the situation they're in that they don't have time to look back a little bit. But I think there are some things which are of interest, and I think there are others which possibly, that where the parallels are not terribly important. Uh, I, uh, one of these things, uh, which is much, dis well, somewhat discussed, but perhaps not as much as all that, is the connection between the political um, structure of, of the community in which we are in, in, in Europe and the economic structure. Can, was it a good idea that at last, after a decade of monetary union, people are beginning to ask, was it a good idea to enter the monetary union? Or rather, more, more exactly, would it have been better if it had been done a different way? In other words, if it had been accompanied by steps towards a, a greater political mm -hmm. approximation of the component parts. Now, for that, we have plenty of historical examples. The 19th century saw various uh, monetary unions, uh, of course, under a different kind of situation because usually these were uh, metal-based uh, um, monetary systems. They were not um, uh, paper-based like uh, at the present moment. But nevertheless, uh, predictions were made some years ago on the futility of trying to bring about a monetary union without sufficient political union. So that, for example, is interesting. Whether it is useful for decisions which are taken today is a different matter. I think there probably is not much of a chance that the states of Europe are going to come much closer than they are at the moment in mm -hmm. terms of political structures. Uh, on the contrary, it's possible that it's never been more difficult than today to make this approximation because there's been a, quite an exacerbation of national feeling and of uh, jealousy, envy, and fear of your neighbor. And so that may not bear any lessons except uh, rather um, sinister ones for us. That this, mm. this is, if this is an essential ingredient, it's not going to be present uh, mm. in the near future. And then I think there are several economic aspects, more, more economic aspects, which can be of interest. And, uh, but, uh, and for example, the, the, the uh, interaction between the monetary and financial aspects of, of this whole question and something which perhaps has, not, has, has received a lot of attention, but perhaps not enough in, yet. And that is, for example, things to do with the labor market, competition, the relation between mm -hmm. all these things and, the, and the, uh, the immediate problem, which is that of uh, consolidating uh, financially and, uh, and, and, and the rest. So I think history is interesting for discussing the present situation. It may be of some use, but of course, until politicians uh, really take history into account, it's not going to make much of an impact. <laughs> Okay, I have a second question which is related yeah. to this one. And uh, uh, it's the following. And could you elaborate about the similarities between um, and differences between the Great Depression and the Great Recession, which is also uh, in the current debate, but it's different now? Uh, is it really different from the Great Depression? Mm. Could you elaborate a little bit about it? 
Well, I think the, well, probably one of the most important differences is that now we have, we already know about the Great Depression. When the Great Depression took place, there was no Great Depression before that. I mean, there had been several depressions, but none with the cataclysmic and shocking aspects that the Great Depression apparently took. Uh, and so that makes a bit of a difference. But perhaps uh, it's not such a big difference because somehow when one looks at the present situation, one does not see, and they, this takes us back again to the historical aspect, one does not see uh, enough, that the, the experience of the past is frightening enough people to into having uh, perhaps more functional attitudes towards the solution of the, of the present situation. But uh, there, there has been such an immense change in, for one thing, the, the, the uh, institutional structure of, uh, within the countries and internationally speaking. There had been no Bretton Woods in 19, in the, in, in the, during the Great Depression uh, and all the things which followed. Uh, the financial systems are so so different from what they were then. Mm -hmm. uh, the, te the technology of, of the financial world was, is, is so completely different. It's, it'd be hard to imagine all that was uh, happening, or all that is happening now then. And so I think it's a very different world. Uh, the, the third world did not exist as a, as a player. There was no China, there was no India. Uh, now uh, we see the West, uh, unbelievably for anybody a few years ago, so almost begging the East to help, to, to bring the, they're bringing their begging bulk. Angela Merkel goes to Peking with her begging bowl to ask for money to buy bonds. It's, mm -hmm. uh, so I think the two situations have got the same contours, but uh, they, they are really very different. Mm -hmm. And uh, that means that uh, whoever's going to take the decisions is going to have to be a bit more creative than just looking into the mirror of the past okay. and trying to find a solution. Well, thank you very much, John. Well, well.